Mr. Hoffman, here we have a smaller diameter tree. What type of grafting would we use here? Okay, years ago they used to use a method called whip grafting, but uh, in, a, in, the, in the 70s they come out with a graft called a banana graft or four flap, and it has become quite popular and it works on a, very effectively on a tree that's about a half an inch to a little bit larger in diameter. We need a piece of wood that will pretty well match the same size as the tree or be slightly bigger. So we're gonna, we're gonna demonstrate on this tree and I'm gonna remove this branch first and uh, this will be a nice place right here to put the graft on. It's uh, the first step that we want to do is we want to take a rubber band and we want to wrap around the graft about five or six times so that this is going to hold the flaps in place after we make our pattern cut. The pattern cut is made by putting the tip of your knife blade against the bark and with a slight pressure from the thumb pressing in and we're going to make four cuts about an inch long. And then with the tips of our fingers, you have to be very careful with these flaps because you can rip the bark real easily. And uh, we're gonna bring these down about two inches. And our tree is just barely slipping. It should be slipping more freely, but this is gonna work. And uh, we'll get the next two flaps down. And when you talk about slipping, you're talking about how easily the bark peels How easily away. the bark separates mm -hmm. from the tree trunk. Now, we'll take our nippers and take this piece of wood out of the center. Now, one thing that's very important in grafting is once you expose this wood, we want to get the, the uh, wood back in place as quickly as possible because of the, the cambium layer drying out. We're going to make four pattern cuts about the same length and uh, we're going to fit this in the tree and we're going to try to keep this little strip of bark where it fits right in between the two grafts and this is what the rubber band does is we roll it up and this holds the flaps in place while we can tape it. Then we can take just a second here to kind of move the flaps around to get them lined up where where they try to fit right in where it all fits in place properly. Then with our masking tape, we're gonna start down at the bottom and we're gonna go all the way up to the top. And this is what secures the graft in place. We wanna make sure that the buds are sticking up mm -hmm. because if they're down, they won't grow. <laughs> Put it on upside down. <laughs> we, need a, we need a small piece of uh, aluminum foil and the rest of the graft is done primarily the same as the uh, bark graft method. We use a, uh, a baggie mm -hmm. and, and we'll fasten it at the top with our, after we pinch the corner out of the baggie and uh, take it down over the graft. We're gonna secure it tightly up here so that the shellac, when we put the shellac on it won't go down and get in our, our exposed cuts. Mm -hmm. and we're going to tie the bottom down with our masking tape and the next step is we're going to put a, a bird perch on so that if a bird comes in and lights on this it won't knock the graft over. We've seen a lot of grass destroyed shortly after they were put on because a bird likes to light on something a high, mm -hmm. a high perch and uh, we've gone back and had to redo several grafts that was knocked out by birds. Also it makes a good place to anchor the graft off when we get six to eight inches of growth so that our strong Oklahoma wind storms won't blow them out. Mm -hmm. Now because we pruned up here some of the lower buds are going to open and grow, correct? Yeah. Are we going to want to prune some of that growth away? It's not as important on a smaller tree to have 
limbs on the mm -hmm. uh, a smaller tree, but it wouldn't hurt to leave one or two of the uh, buds that break out that grow for a year or two to, to, to kind of help to graft and not to grow too fast. And that way it, it'll be stouter and it'll be less apt to lose it from a windstorm. <clears throat> Okay. I interrupted you about to put on the shellac, okay. right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the last step. This is something that we've used since we've started grafting almost 50 years ago, and we believe in it because uh, if it turns off hot and dry, this helps to protect that graft and keeps it from drying out. And uh, it's kind of messy <laughs> when you get it on your hands and all. But it's a non-petroleum product that, uh, that is uh, called amber shellac. And it's found that uh, you can easily find it at Lowe's department stores, mm -hmm. and uh, it will it will really help your percentage of grafting if you use it. All right. And how long will it take uh, this type of graft to set? Okay, this one this one heals in on four different places where mm -hmm. all the flaps come together, and this one is actually a stouter graft. One thing that helps this one too is the tree is smaller and it's more flexible mm -hmm. so on a windstorm the tree the tree itself can give which doesn't make it quite as bad about blowing out mm -hmm. and also on this one you can expect to get pecans in four to five years after after the tree's grafted even on a tree this size all right well <clears throat> thank you so much for demonstrating for us well thank you for coming mm -hmm.